Ezra Tuinomu Juni and his neighbors are living in fear of eviction in Kakumiro district by a landlord they've never met. Most of the parcels in Kakumiro, part of the two counties which were returned to Bunyoro after the 1964 plebiscite, are owned by absentee landlords in Buganda. There are some people who say, no, if the government can compensate us, we don't have any problem. They are there. The government is a circular dar. In Mubende district, Peter Kahira lives in Skwala on the outskirts of the Kaweri coffee farm. Every day, he rides through this plantation, relieving the painful 2001 eviction as he waits for the High Court to determine his fate. I have hope that we are going to win this case. In Fort Portal City, more than 200 kilometers west of the capital, hundreds are locked in a land battle with Charles Kamurasi, the head of Toro Kingdom's royal clan, over this Milo land he inherited from his grandfather, the then king of Toro. They don't, they don't have even to have a house there. That is my personal kibanja, the heritage land. That is the law of the Conflicts continue to sprout around the country, including the Acholi subregion, where most of the land is under the customary tenure system. Apa, which lies at the parallel of Amuru and Ajumani districts, remains a flashpoint. Proof of ownership is key in all tenures. And right now, Milo seems to be the safest way to go. So I think this has to be a negotiation between government and the Bugana Kingdom. But that, that one, we appreciate it now for this government. But you never know what other government will come in. Because another government will see that this problem and they will say, all kingdoms are abolished and land belongs to what will you do? So that means they have to agree. Because remember, my law is customary law of Buganda in the, in the, what? In the laws of Uganda. Why are you coming from Chigezi and telling me that your system in Buganda is sinful or is not good. Where do you get that right from? Buganda's land tenure system was largely peaceful, with protests muzzled or swept under the carpet until 1916, when some Buganda aristocrats reportedly started selling their land to foreigners, something Buganda Kingdom said was against the spirit of the 1900 Buganda Agreement. In 1929, when tensions re-emerged, the Busulu and Mfujo law was enacted to balance the rights of Milo owners with the interests of Bibanja holders. In that law, rights to reside upon Milo land depended on the owner's consent. And in section 22 of the Busulu and Mfujo law, tenants were protected against eviction by the landlord. The abolition of Buganda Kingdom and the nationalization of all land holding in Uganda by President Idi Amin through the Land Reform Decree of 1975 accelerated the social cultural bonds that existed between Milo landlords and tenants. However, the growing value of land in Buganda is what brought these conflicts to the fore. When Milo land, alongside other tenure systems, were restored through the 1995 constitution, the Land Act was enacted in 1998 to give effect to the Milo provisions in the constitution. Amended in 2010, the law which has been described as forward-looking is far from providing solutions. So you have to tailor whatever reforms you want to your peculiar conditions. And ours are peculiar, they have been compounded. Uh, every day they are, things are worsening. You first need to do a proper inventory and see where is the intensity of the problem? What's the nature of the problem? Uh, and this, you, you, you would have to invest in professionals, detached from populism and politics. Lawyer Peter Molira, a scion of one of the men who negotiated the 1900 agreement and owns chunks of Milo land in Kampala metropolitan area, says he plans to enter negotiations with his tenants so they can acquire the land they occupy, even though some of these negotiations can end in deadlock because they have no standing in law beyond the willing buyer, willing seller requirement. I tell them that, look, I'm going to give you a free title for your home, for your house, and I, we agree on the size of the, of the land. And then I tell him that if you want more, I'm going to sell you at market value. Lawyer Peter Walubiri thinks this would actually end the unfair predicament landlords find themselves in, collecting pennies in ground rents for highly valuable land. You could legislate a mechanism so you can say, by law, the interest of a minor owner is 40% in the land. The occupant is 60 or 50-50, or 30-70, whatever. You, you, 
it will always be have some level of arbitrariness. But that now, if I know that my interest is 30 percent, I can say your interest is 70 percent. Pay my 30 percent, and if you can't pay my 30 percent, I give you the 70. And we can have mechanisms for valuation. We can have mechanisms for settlement, for processing these buyouts at statutory rates. In its 2013 land policy, in which the government lays out its plan to fix the country's land crisis, the government laid out a plan to streamline property rights under the different land tenure systems. For tenanted land in possession of absentee landlords, experts like Dr. Margaret Rugadia, who is one of Uganda's leading land rights advocates, say the land fund would resolve this problem. The money under the land fund is abused okay, and stolen. So it can never go around to buy enough land to resettle people. The land fund is under-resourced. It would require about 1.76 trillion to have this intervention done. The objectives for which it was established, are they being met? The answer is no. The church that was demolished, that one was taken as a priority issue. Yet you have people who have been, you mentioned, decades. I asked Denis Obo to comment on the situation of these Mpokia evictees like Tuinomu Juni, and he says they are protected by the law since they were resettled by the government. All they have to do in the beginning, if you're under threat of eviction, one, to report these issues to the office of the magistrate, grade one, or the chief magistrate's office, with view of stopping and protecting you. The only problem is that when the tenants and in such situations, they usually go to offices where they are not, pro that, that do not help them, or are not provided for in the law to help them. Mr. Obo means political offices like resident district commissioner, minister's office, or even petitioning the president, something that is common in the country. People want to solve land matters politically, which cannot happen. Land matters need to be solved technically. The Land Protection Unit under the police force says the law can resolve land conflicts. Earlier on, this is what Mr. Mutunji said, if sorted, the land problems would significantly reduce. Multiple titles issued by land office, ambiguous court orders issued by court officers without visiting conflicted lands, delayed judgments in land matters, and some officers' failure to investigate land crimes. Their role is to nip land crimes in the bud. I am putting the brain. I, I want us all of us to share the dream. Now, if we have to look for solutions, then we say we, the public, should come back to them. But I think the governance system needs to improve. Um, we need to stay on the book. Because if you are to look at the laws of Uganda, they are very good. If we could stick on them. The experts we spoke to agree in part that under customary land tenure system, the provision of certificate of ownership will mitigate conflicts. But registration of customary land may come with disadvantages too. The production levels of that land will reduce. You get it? Because land is parceled to small pieces. So that is what is going to happen to customary land. It will be suicidal. Because to write away my land means you have written away the right to property. You have set a very dangerous precedent. But once you do that erosion, then tomorrow the right to property will be exclu we will also say there is no right to cattle. Most of the suggested solutions in this report are captured in the Uganda Land Policy of 2013. But since its formulation, it's been difficult to implement because there are reforms needed in the current laws for it to work. And it's not clear if the amendments being prepared by government will seek to address Uganda's land problems holistically or use a piecemeal approach that starts with Milo Land. Edward Muhumza, NTV.